Hi there and welcome to the Met Office 10-day trend. Storm Kieron is just the latest in a succession of disruptive lows to affect the UK during recent weeks. A couple of questions. Why is it so unsettled at the moment? And is there any end in sight? I'm going to be answering the second question shortly. But let's take a look at the first question. Why is it so unsettled? And to understand that, I'm going to take a look at a bigger picture. North America at the start of next week and the temperature profile, cold air across Canada, warmer air further south. Nothing unusual about that. But compare it with what we're seeing at the time of recording. This cold plunge into southeastern parts of the US coming up against warm air over the Gulf of Mexico. And when we see this kind of thing happening, this temperature gradient, it helps to fuel the jet stream, this fast flowing current of air high in the sky, which tends to pick up areas of low pressure and deepen them and can send them our way. Now, at the moment, that jet stream, because of the temperature gradient over North America, is particularly powerful. You can see these dark colors racing across the North Atlantic, and that helps to deepen areas of low pressure very significantly. And that is indeed what we're seeing with Storm Kieron. Not only is the jet stream powerful, but it's south shifted. So it's sending these lows into the English Channel. And uh, during the rest of Wednesday into Thursday, you can see how many isobars are added onto Kieron. Really tightly packed isobars, particularly for northern France and the Channel Islands. Red warnings have been issued in these areas with 90 mile per hour wind gusts or more likely. But for southern parts of the UK, we're not going to see those kinds of wind speeds, but 80 mile an hour wind speeds or even 85 couldn't be ruled out for some of the most exposed coasts of southern England. Nevertheless, it's going to move through and then by Friday it's disappearing into the North Sea. Another low gets picked up by the jet stream, once again deepening as it heads towards southern parts of the UK. A couple of uh, important differences with this one though for the weekend. The strongest winds will be further south again to affect western France and although there's the chance of some coastal gales for southern co uh, coastal parts of England, it's not going to be nearly as windy as we're expecting from Storm Kieron. This will bring a spell of rain, followed by showers, however. And once that's moved through, well, watch what happens for the rest of the weekend and into the start of next week. The centre of these lows becomes focused to the north of the UK rather than to the south. The jet stream becomes weaker. We lose those dark colours. And so those lows aren't going to be deepened as significantly. So it's going to stay unsettled into next week, most likely. But because we lose that very tight temperature gradient over North America and because the jet stream as a consequence won't be quite as powerful, we're not going to see such menacing lows through next week. But let's take a look at Storm Kieron. Here it comes during the rest of Wednesday and after dark really on Wednesday, we're going to see the wet and windy weather arrive from the southwest and then those winds peaking in the far southwest during the early hours of Thursday. So waking up on Thursday, we're likely to see wind gusts in some parts of the southwest, particularly southwest Cornwall, the Scilly Isles exceed 70 miles an hour and in some of the most exposed spots, 80, 85 mile per hour wind gusts. You'll notice these very dark colors pushing into the Channel Islands, into Brittany. So hence the red warnings in these areas and the risk of 90 mile per hour wind gusts. As we go through Thursday, the strongest of the winds tend to transfer eastwards. A very blustery day inland, 50 or 60 mile per hour wind gusts in some places, but it's along the English Channel coast into Kent, Sussex, and then Essex later in the morning, where there is that continued risk of 70, 80, and in some exposed spots more than that. Finally, later Thursday, Kieron moves through, but let's summarise those warnings. We've got a yellow warning across southern counties of England and South Wales, 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts inland, more than that in exposed spots over west facing hills and uh, some coastal areas. But within this yellow area, two amber warnings. So it's really during the early hours of Thursday and around dawn where the winds peak across southwest England and in the exposed coastal areas, 80 mile per hour wind gusts or even a bit more than that in some of the most exposed spots. Likewise, similar values for the far southeast of England around the coast. 
uh, but those wind strengths peaking later in the morning and into the afternoon in this area. Those kinds of winds would make for dangerous coastal conditions, big waves, risk of flying debris, and certainly a lot of disruption to transport, uh, especially around the coast, not exclusively. Some inland areas could see that as well. But the further north you are, the further away from the coast, the less disruptive it's likely to be. And for the Midlands northwards, it's not going to be quite as windy. It'll still be blustery and we'll still have spells of rain pushing in on Wednesday night into Thursday. The heaviest of the rain likely across Wales and the southwest, but then an increased focus during Thursday and into the start of Friday as Ciaran pushes into the North Sea of some very wet weather across eastern Scotland and northeast England. Because of that and because these areas are very wet at the moment, very sensitive to further rain. We've got a couple of yellow warnings for rainfall. Wales and the south of England, 30 millimetres widely, 60 millimetres for some. Risk over hills of 80 millimetres or more, perhaps the wettest conditions for North Wales. Eastern Scotland, North East England, 30 millimetres widely, 60 millimetres on hills. Could cause further impacts because of the uh, very wet recent weather we've seen here. You'll notice Western Scotland, Northern Ireland, not particularly affected by uh, warnings over the next few days because actually, as Storm Kieran takes a southerly track, for once, northwestern parts of the UK are spared the wettest and windiest weather. And Western Scotland, once again, similar theme to recent uh, weeks, seeing a largely fine day on Thursday with some sunny spells and some showers, likewise for Northern Ireland. But elsewhere, spells of rain and strong winds at times, making it feel unpleasant, no matter what the temperatures are doing. Into Friday, uh, the, the storm does move through the North Sea and we're left with this blustery northwesterly airflow. Bright spells, a lot of cloud, some further showers, especially in the northeast and also for Northern Ireland and Wales and southwestern parts. Some heavy downpours in places, but also some drier interludes. Temperatures not far from average, 12, 13 in the south, 11 or 12 further north. And actually, as uh, Storm Curon moves through and we see another low come along for the weekend, the weather stays very mixed, very changeable. But here's the wind gust graphic again. And it just shows that the strongest winds on Saturday really will be across France with 70 mile per hour wind gusts or more in places. But just the hint there of some strong winds at times over the English Channel coast. So still a blustery day to come on Saturday with some coastal gales potentially. A spell of rain early on across southwestern parts pushes into the Midlands, eastern and northern England during Saturday afternoon as well as North Wales, followed by lively downpours, perhaps some thunderstorms and gusty winds. Meanwhile, Scotland and Northern Ireland a lot of fine weather. There will be some sunshine in between the cloud, but also quite frequent showers coming to the north and northwest of Scotland as well as parts of Northern Ireland. Feeling a bit colder in the north. In the south, it's still 12 or 13 Celsius on the thermometer. Then if you've got uh, uh, outdoor plans on Saturday night, because of course it is bonfire nights on Sunday, we're going to see further showers or longer spells of rain. Uh, quite a blustery breeze, but the winds won't be as impactful as the next 36 hours. And then into Sunday, a similar theme, showers coming in from the west northwest. Most frequent of these will be in the west, drier and brighter interludes towards the east. And likewise for Sunday night, if there are any bonfire night plans, many places will be fine. There'll be some clear spells, but continued showers coming into the west at times. Now, into the start of next week, little change. Sunny spells and showers for many, especially towards the west. The driest, brightest weather will be towards the east. And temperatures similar to the next few days. 13 Celsius in the south, 10, 11 further north. Again, not far from average for the time of year. But signs of a little bit of a change later Monday. And as we go into Tuesday, a weather front arrives into the west to bring a longer spell of rain on Monday night and into the start of Tuesday. This is tied to an area of low pressure sitting to the northwest of the UK this time and that weaker jet stream helping to drive those areas of low pressure into the north of the UK at this stage and it looks like the jet stream will also push a bit further north. So all in all that means that areas of low pressure will still be in charge for next week but they're going to be sitting towards the north or northeast of the UK at times with showers or longer spells of rain coming in from the west or northwest. So still blustery, still some heavy downpours, especially in the west or longer spells of rain. For example, this here is the most likely weather pattern 
for next Wednesday. Shows another low coming along with some wet weather across western parts of the UK and some strong winds with the risk of gales most likely towards the northwest this time. But there is the hint there that there could be a spell of heavier and more persistent rain in the south for a time because there's another feature in some of the models that affects northern France once again that could push up a bit of wet weather for a time. Either way, that moves out of the way for the end of next week as low pressure tends to migrate once again to the northeast of the UK. And we're going to see once again this showery west-northwest or northwest of the airflow interspersed by sunny spells, but temperatures trending downwards. So if you average out the weather conditions throughout next week and the pressure patterns, this is effectively what you get. Lower than normal pressure towards the east and northeast of the UK, higher than normal pressure towards the southwest, and that would lead to a cool and showery northwest of the airflow. Most of the showers will be towards the north or northwest, and the driest and brightest weather will be towards the south and southwest. That would also lead to lower than average temperatures. This is the average temperature anomaly for next week, Monday to Monday, and it shows blues across the chart there. So uh, it's going to be a fresher field, but nothing too exceptional. What about beyond next week? Well, we don't just look at computer models, we look at what's happening in different parts of the globe because that can impact our weather and at the moment there's an El Nino in place over the Pacific. If you want to find out more about El Nino then we've got a YouTube explainer on it. Just search for Met Office El Nino video and what El Nino does is it's well creates different pressure patterns and rainfall patterns across the Pacific and, and um, uh, sea surface temperature patterns and that can and often does lead to unsettled weather at this time of year in the UK because of the interactions between El Nino and the upper level winds and so on around the globe. And that is in fact what we have seen recently and there's a little sign it's going to come to an end during the next couple of months or so. We've also got the Indian Ocean Dipole in a positive phase and that has a similar effect to El Nino. It's again an oscillation in pressure patterns and uh, sea surface temperature patterns, this time in the Indian Ocean, and it positively correlates with unsettled weather for the UK at this time of year. So all in all, when you look at what else is happening around the world to get some clues about what's going to happen with the UK's weather, it all suggests low pressure is most likely, and that low pressure is likely to be sitting to the west or northwest of the UK over the next month or so. But of course, for day-to-day -day detail, we'll keep you updated right here at the Met Office. Much more information on Storm Kieron with our other videos on YouTube. So uh, make sure you hit subscribe on our YouTube channel so you never miss an update. Bye-bye.